on today's episode of the Gentle Parenting Show. I am so excited to have Radha Agrawal here. Thank you so much for joining us, Radha. It's good to be here, Kim. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. So I really wanted to talk about how, you know, because as I was sharing with you, it's so important that we take care of ourselves um, as parents, particularly in that newborn phase. And I know, uh, you know, you've shared with me that you can't imagine getting through that phase of parenting without your joy practice. So I'm going to talk about what that means, but maybe we could talk about what is a joy practice. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I, when I, when I had my daughter, um, three years ago, um, I'd already been sort of building a joy practice, but what is a joy practice? A joy practice is essentially a way to start your day or a practice movement, brain body practice that allows you to unlock joy. It allows you to orient your mind and body towards joy. And we look at yoga, the, the sort of the practice of yoga, the practice of meditation, and that takes you from a place of stress to calm, stress to mm-hmm. ease, stress mm-hmm. to equanimity. Um, but but once you get to that place of I'm calm and I'm I'm easeful, it's that new delta of how do I get from I'm good to I'm in joy, I'm in ecstasy of life, wow. I'm in a space where I really can just feel the most just joyful um, sort of being this. And, and I think so much mm-hmm. of, of the world of, of mindfulness can be so focused on, on ease and, and, and calm when yeah. I think that there's another level of life mm-hmm. to be experienced, which is, mm-hmm. which is joy. And so, mm-hmm. you know, a lot, everyone's talking about joy right now, but um, you know, we spent the last eight years really building uh, a joy movement through Daybreaker, our dance community. But then, you know, during COVID, we really thought about, you know, how can we actually convert the, the dance experience into a daily joy practice? And mm-hmm. for me, my daily joy practice, I wake up in the morning and the first thing I do is I put on two songs and then I just allow the music to enter my body and I just mm-hmm. begin swaying. And, and off, this I did every morning with my daughter, you know, mm-hmm. as a newborn, I would just put her against mm-hmm. my chest and I just would dance with her and sway with her. And as I'm waking up my body, I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I'm sharing positive affirmations. So affirmations is also a beautiful joy practice. I am beautiful. Mm-hmm. I am worthy. I'm an amazing mother. I can do this. I am courageous. I am strong. And I think mm-hmm. so often we're so focused on the baby that we, again, don't focus on ourselves and pumping mm-hmm. ourselves up. You know, we literally are pumping milk out of our <laughs> boobs <laughs> and, and are not pumping ourselves up to be able yeah. to produce more milk, which is why so many of us have trouble with our supply. You know, yeah. um, it's just because we're not giving ourselves enough positive affirmation, enough movement towards joy. And it's yeah. amazing, even if, I'm, if I, even if I'm exhausted and tired, I sort of pick her up and I just force myself up to get out of bed. I look myself mm-hmm. in the mirror, you know, even with my like postpartum body. And I just mm-hmm. would give myself love and affirmations and, and tell my, I thank my body, dance yeah. and sway to the music, allow the music to enter mm-hmm. my body, move my hips, move my shoulders, you mm-hmm. know, hum to the music and, um, and just allow um, joy to enter my body. And again, like yeah. part of a joy practice is orientation, right? It's just like orienting your mind and body towards joy. And a joy mm. practice is just is starting with that orientation in mind. It's not just, okay, I'm orienting to less stress and more ease, but I'm going to start by orienting to more joy, right? Mm. I'm going to start my day with hands up, ecstasy. I'm going to start my day mm-hmm. looking for moments to experience more joy. And especially in the first three months postpartum, mm. it's just, it, it, you know, it's, it's so hard to think of anyone but your baby. But when I did that, it gave me more strength, gave me more confidence, it gave me more energy mm-hmm. to yeah. actually be a better mom and be a better parent. And I think my daughter um, is so much better for it. So a joy practice is everything from breath work to affirmations, to dance, to tapping practice, to nature forest bathing, walking in nature slowly. Um, it's mm-hmm. slow, relaxed movements that aren't about high intensity interval training, which mm-hmm. actually the New York Times just came out with a big study that talks about how high intensity interval training is actually 
bad for you and can cause more stress in mm. your body um, and spike your cortisol and create heart arrhythmias wow. and all these things. So gentle movement practices, movement practices that allow you to what I call glisten rather than sweat, right? Where you're glistening or you're glowing mm-hmm. from, from mm-hmm. moving your body gently mm-hmm. rather than sweating red faced out of breath, right. you know, is just a much more um, sort of joyful way to, to be and, and be in, in, in awareness of your, of your brain body needs. First of all, I love that you use the word glistening. That's the word my mother always <laughs> uses. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, we're going to glisten, Kim, not sweat. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just think that sweating is just, I don't know. I mean, there's obviously a beautiful time and place for it, but I, I just, I totally. just, I think that the reason why the Japanese are the longest living on the planet, mm. you know, they're the, the, the most number of, of healthy centenaires, 100 plus year olds, is yeah. because there isn't a gym culture in Japan, there isn't a culture of excess and extremes. Um, it's a culture of, there's a Japanese, I'm half Japanese, harahachi bunme, which means 80%. You eat to 80% full, you exercise to 80%, you move to 80%. You're not trying to go 100, 110. In America, it's like, go 200%, do the right. three, you know, like, right? It's like, and, and, and there's a reason why, you know, we're a much unhealthier society than the rest of the world, both in our minds and in our bodies. And I think so much of the joy practice looks at holistic joy, not just having Mm -hmm. six pack abs, you know, Mm -hmm. and a calm mind, but, but really bringing all of it together and inviting smiles, inviting play, inviting movement, um, expression, community, belonging into that as well. And that's so much more aligned actually to the beginning of parenting, right? Because you can't like pop out a baby and be doing interval training or you probably shouldn't be, <laughs> you know, right. and, and also you're not up for it. And we really are supposed to be slowing down and connecting with our baby and taking care of our body and attuning to this new person and what it means to us to be as a parent. You so. got it. You got it. And and I literally Googled after I gave birth for like gentle movement practices. Where can I do, you know, things that bring me joy. And there was literally not a single platform place I could go to, which is why we built it um, ourselves. And so we built a library of hundreds of joy practices um, that sort of have Qigong slow um, in a sort of um, Eastern European, uh, Eastern Asian uh, practices around right. sort of moving your energy. Uh, Shinrin Yoku in Japanese, which means Japanese forest bathing to move through nature. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just so many beautiful, gentle practices that take you to the same place of health for your mind and body without um, without taxing without taxing yourself the way yeah. um, so much of the workouts you know that mm-hmm. you see out there. Mm-hmm um, Mm -hmm. do, do to you, especially, you know, new mothers. So. And I bet you, even though I'm, I don't know how you'd study this, but I bet you that's going to have a profound effect on the newborn, whether they're, they're right next to you hearing the music as an example and the nature sound, or whether they're on your chest in a carrier while you're moving, it's gotta be. So it's, you can't even, so my daughter, we listen to music every, there's not a moment in our home that there isn't music playing. And Mm -hmm. she now, you know, even on my phone, she only scrolls to Spotify and she'll find her favorite music and play it. And she has an eclectic, you know, interest in all kinds of music, but I just Mm -hmm. noticed that she's, I mean, she is, music is such a beautiful connector to joy and to, mm-hmm. and to wellness, but it also is such a wonderful math sort of neuro kind of, um, it, it just helps newborns and just children in general build a different type of, of neural pathway that makes mm-hmm. them better at learning at math mm-hmm. at science. And just like mm-hmm. my daughter can read and write and mm-hmm. she can paint and she knows all of her, Mm -hmm. states and her she knows Mm -hmm. how to count she I mean it's just it's it's amazing how much music I attribute to her ability to learn Mm -hmm. and her ability to express joy Mm -hmm. she dances every day with us we're not dancers by trade but she Mm -hmm. she just loves to dance and and joy is is such a north star for our family 
um, mm-hmm. and practicing joy because we orient to it um, mm-hmm. makes it so much more fun for, yeah. for all of us, the whole family, yeah. you know, not just for the kids, but certainly for me as a mother, for my husband, as a father, it's like we're, our goal today is to practice joy together rather than practice, let's say, you know, a, a movement or a, a, you know, a yoga, pra- whatever, whatever right. it is, though yoga is a joy practice, right? Like sure. we have lots of different joy, yoga, yoga on our, on our platform. Um, but it's, we have music that goes along with it. There's art, there's, there's so many more sort of aesthetics that you can add to the yoga experience mm-hmm. that, that then takes it from a mindfulness practice to a joy practice. Exactly. And, and I think that's the difference. Yeah. And it's probably, it sounds like it's just easier to kind of fit into life when it's not like an agenda. Like I must do this flow. I must meditate for 15 minutes. It's I'm experiencing joy and there's lots of ways I can get there. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. There's, there's mm-hmm. hundreds of ways you can get there. And, and mm-hmm. you know, for, for me, like my whole entire, um, you know, MO, my entire MO has been, how can I essentially track down the most potent joy practices on the planet? So how can I track mm-hmm. down all the most potent joy practices on the planet mm-hmm. um, all around the world so that we can give our community members a variety of things because not all of us are going to want to do cycling or just like, you right. know, right. Like bench press, like one type of workout, mm-hmm. but it's like, some of us will want to do mm-hmm. more, you know, just a bit more high glisten, you know, yeah. uh, uh, movement practices. And then some of us might want to do, um, again, forest bathing or qigong or right. visualization practice or breath work or right. journaling practice or right. or learn from a lecture series. So we have dozens of lectures from Marion Williamson to Chip Conley to just all these amazing um, um brilliant teachers who are teaching about joy as well and how to yeah. orient your mind and body mm-hmm. towards it. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, as long as there, there is an opportunity for someone to step into joy, people want to take it right. Like whenever I invite someone into a joy practice, it's like, why would I say no to that? Right. 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 It's like some, sometimes it's harder to be like, Hey, you want to do yoga or Hey, you want to do meditation? meditation practice like sometimes it's harder yeah right to yeah. to get someone to come in and do these things but hey kim do you want to come with me and do a quick joy practice it's like right. why would you say no right you know oh today we're gonna to do a dance you know one song dance party oh you know let's go and like you know skip in the forest together you know right. oh let's go and and let's draw in our journals something that brings us joy or like doodle our favorite doodles while we speak affirmations to ourselves with every stroke, you know, like there's, yeah. there's so much in this space of joy that makes life more playful mm-hmm. that I think in the wellness world, especially things can be pretty solemn and serious mm-hmm. and it can take itself very seriously, mm-hmm. you know? And I think mm-hmm. the more joyful we are as parents, the more our children feel that mm-hmm. of course. And, um, and our children, of course, are our biggest teachers because children laugh, you know, what is it like 500 times a day to the adult that laughs a fraction right. of that um, right. per day, you know? So, and also it's so good for us to, cause in, in a world where everything's so fast and we're t- constantly connected, but not connected, right. You know, connected through devices right, totally. or whatever, but totally. la- still lacking deeper connection in community. And then it's some, I, I find a lot of parents tell me it's hard to, to be kind of quiet and, and in, in the moment. And really that's what that's right. our babies need. And honestly, our children too, even if it's like 20 minutes, you know, where we can get that's on, right. yeah, get on the floor and like, be like a kid, you know, and that's right. skip through the forest, you know, instead of feeling like, Oh, I have to be very serious in my parenting. That's right. That's right. And you know, there's, there's, when when you're just going through the motions, right? They say the, you know, time goes so fast. It goes so far. You blink and then they're in college. You blink and they're out of the house. Yeah. And and you know, the more present and in play and in joy we are with our children, actually, the slower mm. the time is. And so when when someone says that to me, me and my girlfriend, we always say that, actually, you know, when someone's like, it goes so fast, I'm like, no, I, I'm making it a point for it not to go fast. Mm right? By being deeply in joy with my kid. And so yeah. I love to say, no, I'm letting time be slow. It doesn't go fast for me. Every, every day with my daughter has been, you know, 
so present, so connected, so playful because I'm allowing and orienting again mm -hmm. my mindset to a joy mm -hmm. and be present to that joy and that play. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't have to go fast. Mm -hmm. It can actually be slow mm -hmm. if you if you let it be. Mm -hmm. you know? So like let's just break it down to, you know, sort of everyday life. Um it you know, let's say you're, you know, new parent at home and you're on leave from work or your own business you know, there's your baby and then you always have this other thing kind of calling on you so that it's hard to imagine always being in a playful, joyful state. I would, I would imagine. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I, the first thing I would say around that is just, oh yeah, it took me probably six months to realize that I was, you know, um, when I was with my daughter, I was thinking about work. When I was at work, I was thinking about my daughter and it was like extremely disorienting. And it was really after those six months that I, again, you know, really started that joy practice and really focused on, no, when I'm here, I'm here. I'm going to be in play, in joy, in presence with my kid. Mm -hmm. And when I'm at work, I'm also going to find my joy practice, mm -hmm. you know, in the comforts of my creative outlet mm -hmm. and like as a human being, as an adult, mm -hmm. right? Like we're, we're, I'm not going to give all of myself to my kid. Right. I'm going to give, I'm still a creative being. Mm -hmm. I want to be creating in the world. I want to be serving in the way that feels good for me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. while I'm here in this space, I'm going to find my joy practice in the creative expression yeah. of my work. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I go home and I'm in that, in, in the joy practice of being fully in play and presence um, with with my daughter, and so we have a lot of that these lecture series on on you know on Daybreaker Plus, but 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 that I think for me is what really shifted everything was just um, the presence, the the presence and and the orientation to joy. Those are the two things: yeah. is orienting, and then the practice. First, it's orientation, then it's the practice, and then the practice of joy takes you into presence, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's really the the order. Mm -hmm. And do you usually tell people how, like, what do you say when they say, well, how much time should I dedicate to, to my joy practice? So, you know, it can be as little as 11 minutes. Mm -hmm. Like we call them micro doses, mm -hmm. you know, on our platform, mm -hmm. we call them doses, like your dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins, mm -hmm. your four happy neurochemicals spells out the word dose. So you can actually dose yourself on your own natural high rather than sort of need ex external substances mm -hmm. to give you that, that, you know, mm -hmm. um, that serotonin boost or the SRI boost. And so, um, so we call them 11 minutes, 11 minute doses, our class are 11 mm -hmm. minutes, 22, 33, but yeah, in as little as 11 minutes, like that's all you need to, it takes seven minutes to break a sweat, to glisten, to move your mm -hmm. body, to really like commit, right. Mm -hmm. To, 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 um, to brain body connection. And then, and then the extra four minutes, so it's like 11 minutes, you can do your visualization, you can do your breath work, you can do one to two song dance party, right. and then you can do your journaling. Right. So in the so we have a whole morning routine joy practice that we're launching in January. Oh, yeah. um, that's sort of, it's an 11, 22 and a 33 minute morning routine joy practice that sort of brings all the goodies mm -hmm. that we all love. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of breath work, a little bit of mindfulness, a little bit of yoga, stretching in the morning, a little, a one, you know, a little bit of dancing, a little bit of journaling and a little bit of connection, sending a, a message to a friend that just says, Hey, I love you. I miss mm -hmm. you. I'm in the vortex of being a mom right now, but I just want you to know that I love you and thinking of you yeah. and just taking 10 seconds or one minute in the morning routine yeah. to send an affirmation to a new friend or, mm -hmm. you know, a meaningful friend or colleague or, or family member with whom you want to connect yeah. with. That's such a big critical part of, of, of the postpartum experiences, how lonely we feel as women, yes. how lonely we mm -hmm. feel in that experience mm -hmm. and how important it is to have a lifeline by reaching mm -hmm. out and being told sometimes to reach mm -hmm. out. Oh yeah. You know, um, my joy practice, you know, if you're kind of shy, my joy practice invites me to share love with, with friends daily. And, and I thought of you today to send love to right. just wanted to, instead of it feeling kind of weird or awkward, sometimes it can mm -hmm. be, you can blame it on the joy practice, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So giving, giving it an anchor is just really nice yeah. um, to be able to share love with somebody and, and it comes back in spades. And, mm -hmm. and that, 
energy back becomes a lifeline for you as a new mother. Oh my gosh, that's for sure. And I, and you know, I was thinking about how now you know, there's so, well, there's always been so much judgment in parenting and polarizing of parents. And even like, do you co-sleep? Do you not co-sleep? Are you breastfeeding? Are you not breastfeeding? Are you, you know, did you have a C-section? Did you have a natural birth? Right. You know, like all these ways, even though like, Honestly, we're all in the club together, right? Um, right. And so, right. so much of it. And then not to mention we have social media that, oh my gosh, she looks like she didn't even just have a baby and everything's fine. Why am I such a wreck, right? right? Um, and, totally. and so I think that, that that could be a way to break out of that. I would imagine you'd have to pick your people, you know, that are supportive and, and loving and aren't coming from a judgmental place to create your tribe. That's right. That's right. And and so I started actually a community on WhatsApp called Modern Mamas. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I invited when I was three months pregnant and like my husband wasn't, there's no hormonal change in mm-hmm. him, but I had all these hormonal changes happening mm-hmm. in me. And I was like, nobody understands what I'm going through, including my husband mm-hmm. and, you know, all yeah. this sort of feeling of loneliness. Even if I wrote a book called Belong and I'm a community builder by trade, community architect by trade, there's such a depth of loneliness that you feel in the first several months yeah. of your pregnancy mm-hmm. because your hormones are mm-hmm. raging and nobody understands mm-hmm. you. And so um, so instead of like taking it out on him and just like all of this sort of mm-hmm. you know emotional imbalance, mm-hmm. I just was like, no, I don't want to do that. Let me start a WhatsApp mm-hmm. community. As so I just invited, you know, 15 moms that I knew um, who just had sort of newborns or, or you know, one-year-olds and I just, or a couple, you know, different age groups and invited in this WhatsApp group. And that has become, there's now 75 women in this community and it's a lifeline. Like when I have a new friend that has a baby, I throw her right on to the WhatsApp and she's just like, Rada, this thing has saved oh, my life because it's just because like, you just have a question to ask him having with trouble with sleep. Mm-hmm. And it's like, boom, here's what we, here's like 15 women who jump in. Here's what right. I did. What do you think? Co-sleeping or right. not co-sleeping? 15 different women will respond with their mm. points of view. So you can get to decide what everyone's, you know, what everyone did for mm-hmm. themselves. And, and I think that's another thing that is hilarious. Like so many of my friends who are on this WhatsApp thread were like, Oh man, I wish I would have done that when I was three months mm-hmm. pregnant. I wish I would have done. And it's just so easy to do. And this is why I wrote my book mm-hmm. belong because I just was like building a community is so easy. You just have to that. start yeah. just open up your WhatsApp thread, invite 10 people mm-hmm. on it and just say, Hey, I'm inviting these women, all of you badass mm-hmm. moms who are both professionals and moms. I need help. Mm-hmm. Can we just be a forum of women to support mm-hmm. one another? Oh my God. Thank you. for being- Yes, 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 yes. And that's it. And then game on. And now you have a lifeline right. and right. it's been such a lifeline. I think people just don't realize what agency we have mm-hmm. to do that. Yeah. And especially as moms, as a tribal group yeah. of women, who have now somehow been relegated to white picket fences in our own individual homes, rather than the village mm-hmm. experience where the village mm-hmm. raises the child, we have forgotten the matriarchy. Yeah. We've forgotten the women that are here to support yeah. one another. So it's I'm super excited yeah. about, um, yeah, about just open sourcing and sharing all that that I did mm-hmm. as a mom. How it's been such a lifeline for me, um, and um, and I want you know women to know that they have the agency to do that too. I love that. Especially. You know, I don't know if you've read the book The Red Tent, but um, it was about you know centuries ago when all the women they sometimes you know shared a husband and had different roles, and yep. then when they're menstruating, they went into the red tent, and there they were all equal you know, and rubbed each other's feet and sang and shared lures. And I remember when that book came out, it was quite a long time ago now. Um, so many of my girlfriends and I were like, where is the red tent? <laughs> we- exactly. <laughs> and so we have to create one and it can be as simple as a WhatsApp thread. I love that. Not complicated. That's <laughs> it. Mm-hmm. No, it literally, and like, and you know, every Halloween, I'm like, all right, everybody throw up photos of your little ones for Halloween. And it's like 50 yeah. women share images yeah. of their kids' Halloween mm-hmm. costumes, and they're all over mm-hmm. the world, you know, now. And, or I'm like, hey, you know, how's everyone feeling? You know, whatever, like, like what's going on with them? And everyone will just share, like, just like little quick snippets of, of how they're mm-hmm. feeling. And it's just, 
it's just it's so easy. It's a, that's the red tent. I love that analogy. It's <laughs> yeah. perfect. And yeah, it's safe. Yeah. And, yeah. and when we do that for mm-hmm. each other, it feels not, yes, it's not only safe, but also like it really feels like you're yes. held and, and it's so hard. Like when I was wheeled out, I had a C-section mm-hmm. emergency and I was just like pushed out of the hospital, holding my baby as a first time oh. mom with like a giant yeah. cut, like through six layers yeah. of skin and muscle mm-hmm. and tissue and I'm holding this baby and I'm like looking around, I'm like feeling like I'm stealing a right. thing that's I have no idea right. how to take care of as, as I'm leaving right. the hospital. And it, and it was and, and I if I hadn't had this WhatsApp group, I just I know I, I know I would have yeah. crumbled. So I just was like, all right, what do I do? How yeah. do I do this? And I just like so much love and support. And we had women who organized a meal plan for me as well. So I had every meal yeah. taken care of. And I can send you that in the in the mm-hmm. show notes. I'm sure you have that, mm-hmm. but but I can share with you an Excel doc, a Google Excel doc of just how simple it is to do a meal plan for new moms. Yes. So every breakfast, lunch, and dinner, friends can put their names into their slots oh. and then they're responsible for, for just you know sending over right. the meal, ordering the food right. online and sending over the meal to your house for the first two, you know, yeah. three weeks. So like that that type of sisterhood is is just yeah. so so key and feels so good to not have to think about how I'm going to feed myself right. and my kid right. when I'm just getting out of the, right. getting out of the, the hospital. And that you know, feeds so. your joy yeah. is having your child. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. And I think that, that, and I, and I say that you cannot experience joy without belonging yeah. and you just cannot experience joy without your mm-hmm. community. You cannot, we are, spectacularly social yes. creatures humans we were born of another human we as much as we meditate as much as we work on belonging to ourselves yeah. there is no such thing we cannot experience the depths yeah. of joy without being in relation to another person mm-hmm. and so joy the joy practice is anchored by yeah. a community right so so you mm-hmm. cannot practice mm-hmm. joy right mm-hmm. truly with, I mean, yes, you can do it at home in the comfort of your home, but to know that there's a community doing yeah. it with you, holding you accountable. We have monthly accountability mm-hmm. groups on Zoom that we that I hold. So everyone comes on Zoom and we talk about how our joy practice right. is going, what they're struggling with, how they can be supported, where they're, you know, where, you know, where their um, patterns are showing up that are not serving them and how we can support their joy. There's a beautiful monthly accountability coaching that we do. Mm-hmm. Um, to help everyone feel like they're held, like even if they're doing the practice mm-hmm. on their own yeah. at home, right? Every month, there's going to be me and our team there to be like, "All right, Kim, where are you mm-hmm. at? How we doing? Is everyone mm-hmm. good?" You know, and and it just feels mm-hmm. very held that way. I love that. I think that I love so. both. You know, so for everyone listening, right? That importance of community and a joy practice, and that together there. They're stronger in a sense, right? What they feed each other. Right. Like imagine mm-hmm. a pyramid. Yeah, exactly. It's like I rewrote in my book, I rewrote Maslow's mm-hmm. Hierarchy of Needs. He wrote his Hierarchy mm-hmm. of Needs in 1943, <laughs> where lots has, has not been discovered yeah. or researched in the world of belonging. Um, so anyways, I rewrote his his Hierarchy of Needs, but I put belonging in the mm-hmm. base of the pyramid is as important mm-hmm. as food, water, and shelter. Because if you don't belong, yeah. it's as harmful to your physical health as being mm-hmm. an alcoholic. It's twice as harmful as mm-hmm. obesity. Not not belonging actually takes away 15 years of lifespan. It makes you more uh, susceptible to sickness. Mm. There's just so much that's connected to I don't right. belong that we don't even realize, mm. right? And and the top, the tip mm. of the pyramid is joy. It's almost mm-hmm. like it's almost like once you've actually taken care of belonging mm. at the base, you can move up to purpose and you can move up to right to all these other parts of your life. But then at the top mm. of it is joy. At the tip tip of the top is collective mm-hmm. joy. So individual mm-hmm. joy is one uh-huh. piece of it, but collective uh-huh. joy. Imagine, you know, your wedding day on the wedding dance floor is like the best days of our lives are spent typically mm-hmm. on the dance floor, typically, you know, at your wedding, at a wedding, at someone's New Year's celebration, mm-hmm. at a birthday celebration, at some ecstatic moment in your life. The pinnacle moment is in collective oh, joy. So true. And so, so, we talk about in Daybreaker, you know, Daybreaker IRL, we throw dance parties all over the world in person in real life. That's your time to practice collective mm-hmm. joy. 
And then you have Daybreaker Plus or Joy Practices mm -hmm. Online, which is where you practice individual mm -hmm. joy. You actually build up your own stamina. Mm -hmm. You build up your own mm -hmm. system um, in your mm -hmm. micro doses, you know, uh, and, and morning mm -hmm. joy routines. So that when mm -hmm. you come out into these community experiences, you're already sort of yeah. so full of your own individual joy that you can even wow. show up more authentically, mm -hmm. more yourself, less self-conscious, mm -hmm. less, you know, in states of, of um social anxiety, mm -hmm. you know, that most people, you know, self-label themselves as, which I also find mm -hmm. to be fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and give yourself the opportunity to experience the depths and ecstasy oh, of collective joy. I love that. I love how you connected all of that. Maybe we could just have a couple more minutes of talking about Day Breaker Plus. I'm a member um, and I know my experience, you know, I took my health, my happiness uh, quiz that helped give me my dose. And so each day I go into it, but maybe tell everybody else about that, particularly how you could see new parents yeah. using it. Totally. So, so, you know, we partnered with the Greater Good Science Center in UC Berkeley out of California to develop a, a science-backed quiz, a mm -hmm. joy quiz, so that we can personalize every single person's mm -hmm. uh, joy practice. Because, you know, your Kim West's joy practice will be different from my, Radha Agarwal's mm -hmm. joy practice will be different from every listener out there's joy practice. So step one was let's learn what's going on mm -hmm. with you mm -hmm. in your joy space. Where are you experiencing joy? Where do you need the most support in your dose, your dopamine, oxytocin, and serotonin, endorphins? And each four, each one of these dopamine is like in your purpose and your flow state, in your oxytocin, in your connection with others, mm -hmm. in your intimacy, you know, in your sense of, of, of relationship with other people. That's your oxytocin, your serotonin, in your sense of gratitude, in your sense of, of, um, of kindness and, 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 and um, again, sort of, uh, ease and emotional mm -hmm. stability and then your endorphins which is through awe and play and, and all of that so we sort of analyze your your joy through the lens of kind of how you live your life and then we spit out a mm -hmm. prescription of joy mm -hmm. practices for you so then you go on our website on, on, on our on our platform on daybreaker plus and we have you know mm -hmm. 350 and counting we're constantly filming mm -hmm. new ones every week um in our mm -hmm. studio behind me um and we have hundreds of joy practices. So based on your prescription, you'll go and say, okay, great, I need three parts dopamine every month, two parts oxytocin every month, which means three parts means three mm -hmm. classes every month of dopamine, You know, two mm -hmm. classes of oxytocin, four classes of serotonin, three classes of endorphins. And then you'll start sort of organizing your month of classes based on your mm -hmm. neurochemical needs, right? And so um, it's a really fun kind of gamified way of, of really sort of sort of executing mm -hmm. on your prescription because it's mm -hmm. so personalized. And then we have a community to hold mm -hmm. you accountable. So like I said, every month we invite all of our community members to come on Zoom, which I sort of, I, I lead. Mm -hmm. I mean, I invite someone exciting mm -hmm. every month. So whether it's mm -hmm. Dr. Mark Hyman mm -hmm. or Esther Perel or the founder of Equinox, Livinia mm -hmm. Erico, or you know, mm -hmm. so many different guests. Um, we have them, we'll have them on every single month to, um, to sort of be there, to be, to hold our community accountable, to have a salon mm -hmm. conversation around what mm -hmm. joy means um, through nutrition, mm -hmm. let's say it's Dr. Hyman, through wellness mm -hmm. with Lavinia, through, you know, relationship, you know, love and sex yeah. with Esther Perel. So we would, we would sort of have these types of conversations that are really touch on um, its connection to joy. And then we'll have a Q and A with the community. And then of course, an accountability moment where everyone can break out in groups to share um, what brought them the most joy yeah. this month. So it's a, it's a wonderful community. Kim, you're probably going to get your invitation to the first zoom call Fun. shortly. Fun. Um, but, um, but, but that's it. And, and then, and then the whole idea is daybreaker, like we were around for eight years now, daybreaker is our actual event. So, so once you've joined the daybreaker plus community, um, which by the way, you get, you get two free tickets to Daybreaker IRL, you get discounts to our events, mm -hmm. you get invitations, to all mm -hmm. sorts of things as well as mm -hmm. part of the family membership, but you, um, but then you'd get invited to all of our IRL mm -hmm. events as well, which are just these magical dance parties at sunrise. So we do these sunrise mm -hmm. sober dance parties mm -hmm. all over the world and in iconic mm -hmm. locations. So think waking up at sunrise and dancing at the mm -hmm. top of the world trade center 
or dancing at the Sydney Opera House or dancing at the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. or dancing at, you know, um, the White House, which we've also danced with in. So Can't wait. Um, we, we, we partner with mm-hmm. iconic locations mm-hmm. to dance in and imagine an intergenerational mm-hmm. community coming together mm-hmm. to practice joy mm-hmm. together, practice collective mm-hmm. joy together mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. on the dance floor. So it's, it's, um, it's a peak life experience every single month. And, and actually in 2022, we're doing four 10 city tours all around the country. Um, and we're making the big announcement um, in the next few weeks here, but we're doing 40 events mm-hmm. next year around the country. And the whole entire year's, the, the tour is oriented to joy. So it's the joy tour. Oh, for I can't wait. I'm definitely yeah. coming to one so. of them, maybe more. <laughs> DC, DC and I'll come up yes. to New York too. Yes, please, please. DC for sure. New York. So great. You have to Good. Know. Well, yeah, I'm also going to share um, on another uh, podcast, you know, my experience with Daybreaker. Maybe so I'm going to somehow figure out how to show them, you know, kind of what it looks like. Because it's also fun, you know, every morning to go into it and be like, what do I want to do today? You know, do I want to do yoga? Do I want to do breath work? Do I want to dance? Do I want to, you know, do meditation? So um, it's really, it's been, and it's also kind of fun to like mix it up, you know, Um, mix up my practice. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Not do the same Mm -hmm. thing every day. It's like, I don't always want to go on a bicycle every single day. Like I don't always want to go on a Mm -hmm. yoga mat every single day. Like Mm -hmm. I want to do that sometimes. I want to be on a bike, you know, so to give people the real, the optionality, but in a way that's again, Mm -hmm. gentle Mm -hmm. and fun and and oriented to joy. um, It just gives it a different lens. I don't call it a workout, right? Right. It's, it's a play practice. You know, yeah. it's a joy I practice. I right? can't wait so, to share this with yeah. all with all the new parents, both in my next book and um, you know, on my website and through this podcast. Thank you so much for joining me, Rada. And we will share with everybody who's listening on sleeplady.com forward slash podcast, all the ways that you can find out about Daybreaker Plus. Maybe we'll get that Excel sheet and some of the other great things from your book, Rada, and how to follow Rada and learn more about all the things that she's doing. So thank you again. Blessings. (laughs) 